Origin, the only power tool that gets better over time. Welcome to Inverness. Designing for Origin is now better than ever. With new and improved layout capabilities, Inverness brings even more precision and control to your woodworking projects. You'll see the little blue dot in the corner? That indicates we've got a free system update available. So we're going to go in and update that now, and you'll see our core suite of features are going to get improved. We're currently on Humboldt. We'll hit the update button. The reason I'm able to do that is I'm connected to Wi-Fi. And you'll see there we'll just quickly install that update and then walk through all the new features and show you what we're working with here. So this is a free system update. What that usually brings is performance improvements, stability improvements, core suite of features get an overhaul and an update. As easy as that. So Origin's now restarting. And what we'll be presented with is effectively a tool with a bunch of new capabilities. Let's take a look at what's available here. We are successfully updated to Inverness. So we were on Humboldt, now we're on Inverness. Let's take a look at the core suite of features that have been overhauled. All new positioning. We can now place objects anywhere we like in X and Y. Zoom has been implemented everywhere, so now you should be able to zoom in and out exactly where you need it. Transforms have been overhauled. We can scale, rotate. You'll notice a lot of improvements there that make things more intuitive. Mirrors are a welcome new feature. Everyone's been looking for that one. Custom anchors are a brand new feature, so we'll look into that in more detail. And pocket improvements. Let's take a look at how these are going to positively impact your experience using Origin. Starting at the beginning, scan has been improved. So you'll notice up in the top left, we can just immediately name a workspace in the scan menu. So going from design to scan, first you'll notice we zoom out and origin remains at the center of the world. So everything in here that we're doing is designed to center around you and your workflows and have origin adapt to you. So we can name our workspace, whatever we like. That updates immediately. And we can do a new scan from here, so you're familiar with this. This will look a little different. You'll notice once again, origin is the center of the world, and it's about focusing on your workflows. So that's just a modest improvement. You'll notice these readily throughout. I'll try to draw attention to them. A lot of the UI has been significantly improved to help you understand exactly where you are in the process. So our team has gone in and made a Zoom much more intuitive and basically you should feel like it's just getting out of your way. It's you, your project, your data, and we're trying to present it in a way that doesn't feel like it's getting between you and your results. For starters, when we hit scan, you'll notice we zoom out and it shows us the entire project. Each mode actually has its own zoom level and we'll walk through those now. Design mode, that is now, it's a further back view, but it's actually persistent. So it'll remember where you are and always go back to that same zoom level. So that means if you're working on a large project with a lot of elements over a large area, you're not constantly going into these tiny little myopic views. You're always able to set it where you like it and then go to a different view and return and you're exactly where you left off. So once you're starting manipulating shapes, that will keep track of the zoom level. And you'll notice I'm, I'm able to zoom anywhere. We're not restricted in any way where you zoom, and it's starting to work really nicely like that. There's three different approaches to zooming. Pinch to zoom, there's the zoom slider, which is now, you should find to be a lot more fluid and pleasant to operate. And then there is the double tap. So double tap now has two different modes. So it'll set you to the default zoom level for design and all the way out. So rather than stepping through three modes, there's two, but you have complete control over it and it will remember that level for you. Also keep a note on the cursor there. So in design mode, we're trying to communicate more what mode you're in so you don't inadvertently you know, hit the green button trying to cut. So you see the, the little cursor, the centering cursor and the spindle center. But then when you go to cut mode, A, we zoom in, B, the corrective range is now along for the ride. So that's relevant in this mode because we need to know where origin can correct within. Like that's a physical dimension of about half an inch. You'll notice it scales with the world, but our little cursor remains stable throughout, centered on your screen. So that's our three modes, scan, full view, design, your call, zoom in, zoom out, and then cut. We push in and we show you the corrective range. That should make it much more effortless for you to stay on top of what mode you're in and what you're supposed to be doing in that mode. The next one's super exciting. If we go to design mode and create a shape, say some untooled text, shape of made works for me. We can type in anything there. We now have the ability to position this. So we can hit the position button. You'll notice 
it defaults to telling us exactly where it currently is. So we're using the center anchor point where x 2.5, y negative 1.5. So if I want to make it y negative 2, I just hit that and then go done. And you'll notice it just animates down. And you'll notice our zoom level adapts according to that. Now, we've only locked the y-axis here, so it's at negative 2, which means I can still manipulate the x exactly as we have previously, and I can still zoom in and out. We also need to notice here we've got the x and the y coordinates read out, so it's easy to keep track of which is which. Now, if I want to lock this down totally, I can type in x of 2.5, done, and it animates to that location. Now it's 100% locked, so as I move Origin away, we zoom out to make sure we can still see what's going on. But that is now super defined, center axis is locked down where it belongs. We can also go back in there and edit our text. And you'll notice that's locked at that same location. So position is super powerful and place that shape and we're good to go, we can cut that. So we've positioned that object. Now it's a lot easier to copy an object, especially if there's a grid available. We can do this. So you'll notice it didn't jump when I copied that shape, which is kind of awesome. In fact, we'll turn off, turn off the grid and go copy. You'll notice it didn't jump immediately to where I am. So I can actually then go in and position relative to that. So I could either do, you know, plus 0.5 or, you know, whatever. And I've moved it in the grid coordinate of exactly you know, 0.5. And it's still easy to do the regular copy. So this is how once you start moving, it snaps to origin and behaves as it always has. But you have that option, if you remain stationary when you copy something, you can move it relative to its current position using the grid as its coordinate space. So you can go copy, position, and I might go 5. And you'll see that's moving relative to where it currently is. And then place that, and we can remove the old one if we want. That's hugely powerful if you've got something kind of where you want it, and just want to manipulate it a little, or want to do a series of objects. That behavior is now a lot more user-friendly and really enables you to do a lot without a computer. So let's look at applying the position tool and see what we can do all on origin without touching a computer. What I'm aiming to do here is this little detail on our record stand. So here's an example of some mortises. They're at 45 degrees. They're spaced 1.3 inches apart. And then the dimensions of our little louver piece, 3 eighths of an inch across, 1.175 inches this way, and then 0.8 inches down from the top. We're going to cut this little mortise That'll all fit together perfectly. Let's take a look at that quickly now. So let's install this, and you notice I've just got a grid that's sort of centered on the stock, but I don't need to care about the increments or anything because we can position things exactly where we want them. So I'll start with a 3 8 rectangle. I happen to know it's 1.175 high, and the radius is half of that, so 3 divided by 16. And we'll use the center anchor and then we'll position that at y we'll make, that's the grid snap, we'll make it 0.8, negative 0.8, and then just go place. So that's the starting point, and then we'll just start copying and rotating. We'll make it negative 45, and place that, and I'll get rid of the old one. And then we'll just start laying them out. Because we have a grid active, and the new position features, when we go copy, you'll notice we don't move at all. So it's exactly where we left it, and we can move relative to this in the direction of the grid. I can copy this one and put it at 1.3 inches. And that's great. Copy, position. We can add another 1.3. And can do the same negative. 1.3. There you go. And then that's readily available for cutting immediately. Make sure we do that with a quarter inch cutter. So we're going to start with a sign here. 
Some of you will be familiar with this. I'm going to scale this down to eight inches wide. And keep in mind, this is all not touching a computer. So we can do a bunch of pretty interesting stuff here. And keep an eye on the way this bounding box follows it throughout the process. So if I go give it a 30 degree rotation, you see the bounding box will follow along for the ride. And this remains, if you place it and copy it, it will remain intact. So I'm going to just zoom in a little here and tell it I'm going to flip it. So that's a horizontal flip. You'll notice it's flipping horizontal to itself. And there's a vertical flip. So you can do all this, place it, and then come back to it and go copy. And you'll notice if I go rotate zero, I get it zeroed out. I'm scale. If I flip it again, I can recover that. This enables you to do a lot of really interesting things like a lot of signage stuff where you might need to cut from the back if it's a rare lit thing or you're making a stamp or something like that. Just give you all the options you need in the field at your fingertips so you're not running back and forth to a computer for little tweaks. So here's a little piece of hardware. It's made by Lamello and it's called a Cabinio 8. It's installed ordinarily with a pretty complicated CNC machine that will do three circles to accommodate it. I and mean, there's a range of ways it can be installed. But the key thing here is this leading edge is, even though you cut the full circle, it's this surface that you want to align to the edge of your stock. So if you take a look at the file here and import it, you'll notice there's actually pretty unique behavior going on here. We're not using part of the bounding box to position it. That point we've called out there is actually dead center right on that edge where we want to align it. And you'll notice down here the custom anchor point feature is highlighted. Because one exists in this hardware file, and it'll exist in all of our hardware files to speed up their placement, you'll see the rest are actually currently not active, the regular anchor points. So this is what you would ordinarily have seen. These are just, you know, the regular nine available anchor points. Center, top left, bottom right, that sort of thing. But because this file has a custom anchor point, that is automatically selected, and that's the default. Combining that with position, you know, we can very rapidly put this exactly where we need it. Say negative three inches. So that's three inches from this zero line. And because it's got a custom anchor point, we know it's already perfectly aligned. Place, done. So that covers custom anchor points as you would use them from a file that we've prepared or someone else has prepared from Shaper Hub. But you can also get in there and create your own. So grab a 2D vector editing application whenever you see a situation where you want a very specific point to snap your file that's not covered by the standard bounding box anchor points. And all you do is create a right angled triangle and that's filled red. And whenever you load that on tool, it will say custom anchor point available and automatically populate using that custom anchor point. So that's a great way of speeding up and knowing you're getting exactly the outcome you're after. So here we see a pocket. So I'm just gonna air cut this and show you the improved behavior. So plunge down, everything looks as it has in the past. You'll notice as I approach the edges, Origin is very smoothly handling that transition. The edges of a pocketing operation are much more fluid, much more stable and confident. You'll find doing pockets to be a lot more pleasant. Obviously we come in and we change that to an inside cut to complete the final you know, full dimension cut, but we've massively improved that pocketing behavior. You notice the UI will be polished across the board. So little things like, you know, the cut button gets dimmed out if it's going to warn us that the spindle's off and we're cutting to a depth beyond zero. You're going to notice a lot of little polishing there. Things like we're basically just trying to clear out the UI of unnecessary information when you don't need it. So you'll find yourself more focused on the task at hand more efficient, more productive, and less just sort of a stress staying on top of all the information. So there's a lot of stability and consistency improvements under the hood. They will hopefully just sort of blend into the background and be the norm now. Origin should just behave better than it ever has. The Wi-Fi has been improved from the ground up. So yeah, I hope the eagle eye amongst you notice the little details and everyone else who's just experiencing Origin for the first time, you're going to enjoy this more than ever. So that concludes our presentation of Inverness. We look forward to seeing where you take this. You'll be getting results faster, with more confidence, more predictability, more reliability. Tag your projects on Instagram, ShaperMade, and reach out to us on the community. We love to see what you're up to and what you're doing with Origin.